But what if it's like a platter or like a disc or something and you're trying to find the moment of inertia of that sucker. So here we have a disc and it's infinitely thin so we don't have to worry about any of that. And of course we're going to have the axis go right through the center over oh, there and then well it could come out that side. Sure. So uh, you know what? That's really disappointing. I really wish I hadn't drawn those two dots right there. So when you draw it I don't have those two dots right there, so it'll look like it's going through the center and then you can't see it. Okay, but we need to always define what an area slice is. So we're going to be doing, of course, our favorite integral right here, which is the integral of r squared dm. We need to figure out what dm is. So, of course, dm is some area density that's going to be represented as sigma times dv. I mean, d a right okay good so let's figure out what d a is and i guess d a is going to be a, a square shaped like this where it's got two sides okay so it's not a square it's a rectangle we're we're slicing this thing up into lots of tiny tiny rectangles and the fact that they're rectangles and we're trying to um spread them over a circle isn't really a concern because they're very very small so shut up about that now this thickness right here, that's going to be dr. That dimension is dr. And this thickness right here, well, that dimension has to be ds. But ds, that's a differential um, aroundaboutness or arc length, I guess. But that's going to be r times d theta. So we have now. I think we have a feel for what the air, the differential area is going to be. It's going to be sigma times r d r d theta. If that feels like it's cheating, just note that as we get farther and farther out, the rectangle is going to get wider as a function of r. So it's a linear widening of our rectangle because d theta doesn't change its size. It's infinitesimal. <laughs> but aura is going to cause that slice to get wider and wider as we get farther out. It doesn't matter that it's getting wider, it's still infinitesimal because it's multiplied by an infinitesimal. But it just takes into account that these, uh, these infinitesimal things over here are really, really small, and the infinitesimal things over here are just regular infinitesimal, which means like so small that they cannot be even conceived. But never mind all of that nonsense, it's time for us to perform an integral. Yeah, get in line to your integrals, kids. All right, I'm going to say I over here. And I'm supposed to integrate. Well, let's see. We got now a couple things that we're going to integrate over. We're going to integrate over aura the, as we go from here to here. And we're also going to integrate over theta. So I'm going to have to have theta go that direction. If that was x, then we're going to go that way around the circle. So I'm going to integrate all the way around the circle. So that's 0 for, uh, to 2 pi for theta, and then I'm going to show the other integral like this. Like this is the integral of this stuff too. But then I need to go from zero to capital R, where that is the radius of our platter or disk or what have you. And then I have to multiply by all of this stuff, which is dm. I already took into account the d theta, so I'm going to have a dr here. But what's multiplying the dr? There's a sigma and there's an r. Those guys come from the dm. This is a conversion of units. But then we also have to have an r cubed. Ooh, r, sorry, r square came from the actual what integral are we doing, yo. And then um, notice there's no theta dependence in here. So if I integrate from 0 to 2 pi, the differential theta, I'm just going to get a full circle in theta-ness, which is 2 pi. And then I have this other integral. Oh, gosh, I can pull the sigma out. Let's assume that we have a uniform density record. This is a fairly reasonable assumption, although when I'm looking at records, sometimes they have like a, a thin outside and a slightly thicker middle. Yeah, so that would be a little bit more complicated. I hope you don't encounter a real record um, like that. Well, anyway, let's pretend it doesn't. And then, um, oh, you could just stack one platter and another platter because moments of inertia are additive. You could do three different platters. Ah, oh, that's the way to take care of it without much thinking or any thinking at all. Then there is still an integral from zero to capital R, and that integral is now r cubed d r. Oh, I know how to do that. So first, I get the two and the pi and the sigma, and then I have to take this integral, which is going to give me nothing at the lower bound but I'll get a little bit of r to the fourth over four right there. <clears throat> um, that's not really interesting. What are we supposed to make of that? 
I mean, you could simplify stuff if you wanted to, shall we? Oh yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So I get I equals, and then I'm gonna get, what is, uh, we got a pi? What the heck is that pi doing there? I got pi times the surface mass density, the area mass density, uh, multiplied by r to the fourth, and then I divide the whole dang thing by two. But now we're gonna do that thing that we've been doing each time, but we have to say the total mass is, well, it's gonna be the density times the area. Ah, not that density! That density. Surface density. Um, 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 area density, um, 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 what's the area of a platter? I think it's just pi r squared. So I get a little bit of this and a little bit of pi and the r and the square. So I take this and I go over here and I look at that and I think, holy cow, I should have put the pi and the sigma in a different order. And the other thing I think is I can rewrite this as i equals, I got that and that and that and that, one half Total mass, see how the R is going to be divided right there, and I'm going to get R uh, squared just as we expect. Whoa, we just expected that. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, I don't know how to get this without calculus, so you tell me, and uh, you win. You would actually win if you tell me. But anyway, here we are doing it with calculus, and we can say that beta is one half. So that's kind of cool. Maybe you would have expected that it would have been half for some kind of other geometry, but it's not. It's half for platters and disks and whatnot. Bye-bye.